This video is brought to you by the Intel Core i5 4670K Unlocked Processor. Add an Intel 520 Series SSD to your Haswell system for unbelievable overall performance. Welcome to an, a very excited unboxing of the Angelbird SSD2 Go. Now I can pretty much guarantee you that you've never heard of this product because I'd never heard of it and well, okay, maybe you've heard of it, but I'd never heard of it. It is an external SSD solution, so external storage solution that it's, well, it's been a long time since I've encountered an external storage solution that's really taken me aback and kind of gone, oh, Linus, no, there's something you haven't seen yet. So inside the box, I find, I don't, I don't know if actual retail units come with all this, but I've got a couple of different USB 3 cables. What you'll notice that's unique about these right off the hop is that they're A to A cables. So, okay, you can already tell there's probably something a little bit different about this drive. There's also two more of them. So these are white and I guess possibly different lengths. I have, I have no idea. Apparently, yep, these are, these are longer cables. All right. So the SSD to go has a very, very unique design. This is the twin. Uh, well, why don't we start with sort of common features? So it has a Sandforce based SSD storage solution. Okay, so Sandforce based SSD, that's cool. Next up, it has a built in four second UPS. So what that means is in the event of some kind of uh, power loss or other sort of cat catastrophic failure, the built-in UPS will allow it to flush the cache. That's one of the reasons they used Sandforce controller-based drives inside here, because if you had a, a controller that used a very large cache, then what would happen is in the event of a power loss, there might not be time to flush the data from the cache to the drive itself, and that might result in some data loss. And holy crap, this is one of those products where you hold it and you go, yeah, that feels like quality. Each SSD to go is crafted out of a single block of the highest quality aluminum, according to Angelbird, and I'm inclined to agree with them at this point because it is absolutely fantastic. And the twin model, you can get them in a variety of colors. I actually requested that the twin that I got be purple and black, so it's uh, in, a, in a combined sort of color combo that looks really, really cool. And what you'll notice, okay, so right, so the UPS, all that good stuff. Um, sorry about that, I was actually just too awed by the manufacturing quality. Uh, designed and manufactured in Austria, so this means that I'm now officially a fanboy of at least two companies that are based in Austria, the other being Noctua, which as you guys know, make my favorite fans ever. Um, so, okay, so one of the other advantages of the design that they've gone with here with the aluminum housing is that it keeps the drive nice and cool. So Angelbird's quoting anywhere from a 32 degree to 40 degree operating temperature, meaning that you can use this thing anywhere that you can take it. And based on how it's built, I think you can take it pretty much anywhere. Remember guys, that the things that cause flash cells to degrade are writes. So they have a fixed number of writes that they can handle as well as temperatures. High operating temperatures will make your SSDs degrade faster over time. So the regular non-twin drive is just one of these and the twin, as you can well imagine, is a twinned version of it. Now the first thing you're going to notice about it is what in the heck Linus? It has two interfaces. The reason for that and the reason that I requested this drive specifically is because for my needs, this is perfect. You can get it with uh, any number of different capacities, so 120, 240, or 480 gig individual or dual drives. And what I'm going to be using it for is safe, Rugged, durable, redundant storage. We're going to Computex and we're going to need to store a lot of data that I don't want to keep on a hard drive inside a computer because I don't trust them at all. And I want to be nice and fast for external transfers, which is where this comes in. But I don't want to risk a bar losing it. I don't want to risk any kind of a data loss that's caused by a drop or a fall. So that's where SSD comes in. And finally, because these are fully redundant, they have their own individual uh, data sources, they have their own individual power supplies, completely their own dedicated circuitry. I don't even have to worry about one of them just sort of outright dying randomly. I will still have all of my data. So I'm going for a redundant storage solution where I can just plug them in. The other cool thing is that because USB 3 is going to be pretty much tapped out by the, there we go, 
By the transfer speeds of a SANFORCE-based SSD, what's cool about having two separate interfaces to it is that you can actually take advantage of the full transfer speeds to both of the individual drives, assuming that you've got full 5 gigabit per second from two different ports on your board, which is possible because many boards have multiple USB 3 chipsets built into them. Now, another use case scenario for this is if you wanted to use it as a, like a boot drive and a data storage drive. So they've heard of, cust or Angelbird has had customers ordering these with like a 120 gig drive in one side and a 480 in the other side so they can actually run their OS off of it and then run their uh, run their programs or run their storage or mass storage or whatever else off of a separate one. I think the real story with this is just the overall fit and finish of it. I mean it's um, I've never seen an external drive quite like this. The anodization is immaculate. Um, wow, very beautiful. I think that pretty much wraps it up. I will be giving you guys a full impression of what it's like to use the SSD to go once we get back from Computex, so do stay tuned for that, but I can already tell you I'm pretty stoked on this. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos, and I think something like this wouldn't be complete without my trademark phone comparison. So there it is next to an HTC One, and as you'll be able to see very shortly once I get the nod from NG that uh, we've got a good shot of that, is that it is significantly thicker than an HTC One, so maybe not really intended to be kept in your pocket unless you want people asking you how happy you are to see them, but something that you could easily keep in a bag.